Hey there, extraordinary treasures. This video starts by asking the question, what kind of treasure does your church board need you to be? Now, I believe that number one is mission focused. After all, what are we here for? Finances are important, yes, but we're not a financial institution. We need funds because of the mission. Reports are important. The board needs information to make good decisions to accomplish the mission. The mission of loving God and making disciples is what we're really here for. Number two, your board needs you to be informed and to know how to answer their questions. As you get acquainted with Jewel, you will be able to take your laptop to church board meetings and surprise them with answers. When I first started attending board meetings at a community service center when I became a treasurer, one of the board members just casually asked the question when they were looking at the reports, I wonder why our electric bill is so high right now. So I pulled out the computer and I opened it up and I went back several years and I said, well, it's been about this for every time over the last three years, this particular month. And you could have heard a pin drop. It was like they didn't know what to do with actual answers to their questions. So surprise your board. They will enjoy it. Be familiar with the various reports. Know how to explain them. Take time to learn to find your way around Jewel. It's also okay to say, I don't know. I'll have to find out and then make sure you do it. Come to the next meeting and say, you know, last month you asked me about, and here's the answer. Number three, your board needs you to be a team player, collaborative, not adversarial. Being a farm girl, I really like this next picture. Conflict is inevitable, combat is optional. Remember, unless the board is doing something that goes against church policy or state or federal law, the board has the final word, even if you don't agree with it. Yeah, there's going to be times where being a team player is the wrong thing to do. Let's say you have a CEO pastor who is leading forward it very enthusiastically, but he's using trust funds improperly. You can't just be a team player and go along with it. But there are ways to object respectfully and to educate carefully. Ask questions instead of making statements. Something like, are you okay? It's are you sure it's okay to do it that way? I don't think we're supposed to use trust funds for something else. Let me find out from the auditor before we vote on it. You can be non-challenging and non-threatening, yet knowledgeable. Don't make extreme or exaggerated claims or statements. One other thing is when you're faced with a combative board member, don't just fold, but don't escalate things. You could say something like, you know, I'm going to find out and get back with you on that. Or maybe the pastor and you and I could talk about this after the meeting. Your board needs to be able to trust you to be a stabilizing presence. Number four, your board needs you to be solution oriented. If you're coming to the board with bad news, come prepared with well thought out solutions. But don't be demanding or resentful if they don't always follow your suggestions. Keep a balance between detail and overview in your analysis of the month. You know your board. If you give them too much detail, some of them just shut down and won't listen. Give a bit of an overview of things that are either going well or not going well. Most board meetings, it might take five minutes or so. They don't need you to report to them and say the same thing every month. They need to know what is unusual, exceptional, or worrisome. You can also keep an eye on long-term trends and give them information so they can make good decisions. For example, you could say, if it were going on, I ran the numbers on our bank account, and each year since 2015, our bank balance is around $7,000 less than the year before. I'm concerned about our future since we seem to be living on our reserves. Can we talk about cutting costs? Now, unless someone is comparing those numbers, this could happen and a board might not realize it. Number five, your board needs you to be clear and consistent in posting, in reports, and in memos. Post expenses to the proper account every time. If your reports are disorganized and confusing, ask the auditors for help. Writing a good memo is a skill that can be learned. Actually, the person off a street or somebody from your primary class should be able to come and look at your reports and know from the memos what is going on. 
Your board needs you to be, number six, organized, even if you're not normally an organized person. Develop a system that works for you and work your system. But be ready to listen if an auditor gives you a reason why your system needs improvement and a way to do it. Pay bills on time. Write checks in order. Don't skip steps because you're living by deadlines and emergencies. You may need to say no to some other things. You can't necessarily be the Sabbath school superintendent and the children's ministry leader and the organist and the social committee chairperson and be the treasurer as well. Keep up with your document filing and file everything in order. Number seven, your board needs you to be transparent. Your board needs you to provide evidence every month that the reports are accurate. We recommend this in every audit report that we issue for churches who are not already doing it. If you don't insist that this happen, sometimes boards kind of say, well, you know, we trust you, don't worry about it. But that shouldn't be good enough for you. This is for your protection as well as the protection of the church. Bring your bank rec report and bank statement to every board meeting and teach an appointed person how to compare them to the financial summary. And number eight, be accountable. Work with your board, not against them. Cultivate the kind of working relationship with your board that gains their trust and respect. Don't push your weight around or pull rank or go behind their back to get things done that you want done. Yes, your job is to make sure things get done correctly, but if you create an adversarial relationship with your board, the mission of the church is going to be negatively affected. As you master these skills, your contribution to the mission of your church will be invaluable. So, what do your donors need from you? They only need two things, and that's coming up next. <music>